In this video, we're going to take a look at some of Florida's exotic and invasive animal species, particularly focusing on reptiles and amphibians. Everyone's really familiar with the big one, the Burmese python. They're big, they're scary, they seem to eat whatever they want, and they're really established in the Everglades. We're not really going to focus on that. They've received so much media attention and have been in the spotlight for so long. We're actually looking at ones that aren't in the spotlight so much, a lot of the smaller ones, but ones that are still making huge impacts in the state. Florida is home to about 500 different exotic species of wildlife, over 150 of which are reptiles and amphibians alone. I actually have a lot of them in my own backyard, and I'm gonna take a couple minutes here, and I'm gonna go collect some. It's not gonna take me a lot of effort, because my yard's crawling with them. One of the lizards we're actually really interested in today is this little guy right here, the brown anole, which hails from various islands in the Caribbean. These guys are actually a huge problem. In many areas, they've actually extirpated the native green anole, which has lived in Florida for many, many centuries. But then these guys came by, and within a few decades, a lot of urban areas, these guys just took over. They're absolutely everywhere, and green anoles just can't be found. They are more robust than the green anole. They get bigger, and he's really feisty. They pretty readily bite anything. He's biting my finger right now. So they really readily defend themselves. All right, stop, 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 you won't stop. Another exotic invasive lizard we have in the state of Florida is this little bugger right here. This is the Cosmopolitan house gecko. It's one of many different types of house geckos that occur throughout the state. There are pocket populations of them based on either habitat or ones that have potentially escaped and been released either through the pet trade or maybe they came in on tropical plants or something like that. And, found their way into somebody's yard and they've kind of established in all these little areas. The more north you go, you actually start to find a different species called the Mediterranean house gecko. And then kind of scattered throughout Florida, I found pocket populations of other similar sized house geckos, like the Asian flat tail gecko or the Indo-Pacific house gecko. These guys aren't such direct competitors with the green anole because they're primarily nocturnal. The only thing that these guys are really a serious threat to primarily are insects. So I already talked about some smaller lizards in Florida. Well, the next one is actually a pretty big one, although the one I have isn't full grown, but I have it in this cage behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and try and grab a hold of it. There you are. Hopefully it doesn't. Ah! Very excitable. Ah! There we go. <laughs> this is a. This bugger here is a green iguana. These have been introduced into a large portion of South Florida, and actually this one in particular, I caught at my work a couple months ago. We had a cold spell, it got down in the 40s at night, and the next day we caught this one out sunning itself near one of our work cages. So I, uh, with a sizable effort, I was able to catch it and get a hold of it, and I removed it from the environment. Ugh, it's really, <laughs> it's very angry. These guys actually are pretty detrimental throughout most of South Florida. They eat tons and tons of plants, particularly if you try and have a lot of ornamentals or grow fruits in your yard, these guys can eat tons of them. So they're a problem because of that. And another thing they like to do is they like to burrow. They like to dig lots of holes. So they could really cause a lot of damage to seawalls and other concrete structures by digging holes under them. As you can see, this is a very robust lizard. Still maybe just a fraction of its adult length. These guys can get over six feet long. This one's barely pushing over two. And now this lizard in particular can primarily be blamed on the pet trade. So many people get them when they're little. They're maybe, you know, 8, 12 inches long. People think they're adorable. They get a cage that's too small for it, and they grow rapidly. Uh, so people just can't handle them anymore. And what do they think is a good idea? Oh, it seems nice enough. I'll just let it go outside. It's a terrible idea. Never release your pets into the wild, ever. Always try and find a place to home them. There's usually ways you can post things on the Internet. You're trying to get rid of them. If you're really desperate, post them for free. There's even pet amnesty days hosted by a lot of local organizations where you can show up. Just, they aren't going to blame you. They're not going to look down on you. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, I, I can't handle it anymore. Fill out some paperwork and they'll find someone who's willing to take it off your hands. Got to make sure I button this down so it doesn't uh, escape into the wild again. Well, we've decided to leave my backyard behind and get to a more wild place to look for exotic and invasive species. If you look behind me, you'll see that it's kind of an aquatic marsh habitat. Well, one of the groups that's very exotic and invasive to aquatic marshes and ponds and all sorts of water systems throughout Florida are the turtles. Two in particular, the red-eared slider and the yellow-bellied slider. 
both of which have been primarily introduced through the pet trade. Uh, many people get these turtles when they're smaller, think they're cute, and can keep them in a small tank. Well, what they soon realize is that they take a lot of time to take care of, to feed, to keep the water clean, which if you don't, they start to stink. After a while, the turtles get big, they're not as cute as they once were. People get tired of them, so they see a setup like this, and like, oh, this looks like just a good place, so they can just go dump their turtles out there. That's actually a really terrible thing to do. By putting these exotic turtles into the environment, you impact a lot of native species, such as the Florida red belly cooter, the Florida softshell turtle, there's a number of other cooters, like the protected swanee cooter. Uh, even small mud turtles can feel impacts from having these extra new turtles in their ecosystem. What they do is they can compete for food, they can compete on banks for nesting space, particularly nesting space in areas where the pond's very small in local neighborhoods where people dump these turtles. So now a lot of the native turtles can't compete anymore. They're just kind of run out. Uh, other ways that they could compete are by crossbreeding, actually. It's been known that some of these turtles can actually mate with other native species, and that dilutes the gene pool. And then we no longer have a native species. We have some sort of hybrid species. So then that species could be entirely lost. So it's a really bad idea to release these turtles into the wild. The next animal we're going to look at also comes from the group of the frogs, and it's the Cuban tree frog. I have one in this case here. It's a fairly decent-sized tree frog. This one isn't even full-grown. Uh, they are pretty common in urban areas throughout central and south Florida. They compete with a lot of native tree frog populations such as the green tree frog, the squirrel tree frog, even our largest native tree frog, the barking tree frog. These guys will eat just about anything they can grab, fit in their mouth, and swallow, including, and I've seen them do this myself, other Cuban tree frogs. They're extremely voracious predators. They just decimate native populations of other smaller tree frogs. It's another thing that they have actually is they can secrete a toxin from their skin, which is why I've had it in this cage this whole time. I'll go ahead and pull it out now so we can get a better look at it real quick. The toxic skin secretions, as you can see, my, there's this goo kind of stuck on my hands already where all this dirt is. He's kind of already fouled me up a little bit. It's particularly bad also if you can get it on um, mucous membranes of humans, such as the eyes, nose, or mouth. So don't rub your eyes, pick your nose, or in particular, eat food after handling one of these frogs. I'm going to go ahead and put this frog back in the yard where I found it. Oh, he really wants to go back in the yard. There you go, buddy. And now I'm going to do uh, exactly what anyone should do after handling something like that. I'm going to go wash my hands. <laughs> Although the exotics featured from my yard are well established, which is why they were released, we can still help keep the problem of invasives from spreading. One of the most important things that can be done is to not aid the exotics by collecting native species of pets. And more importantly, do not release exotic pets into the wild. Also, if you think you have found an exotic invasive species, contact the proper authority on how to deal with it.